Hello, this is Bob Manger. Today's topic is the mind and the soul. Your soul is the multidimensional aspect of who you are. It is the higher part of who you are. It is your spiritual self. And reconnecting to the essence of your soul is essential for your joy, your well-being, your success, your accomplishments, and your creative thinking. Or you may simply have the feeling of a need to connect to your soul because you might have a sense of emptiness. Something is missing in your life. Think for a moment which part of you got you here to listen to this recording. Your mind or your soul? Your mind or your intellect would have taken you to listen to something else, such as a real estate seminar or recording on technology or electronics or chemistry. In other words, these are things of the intellect. These are things of the mind. But your soul craves deeper things. Meaning, purpose, joy, excitement, creativity, and so much more. It is beyond the intellect. So for example, IBM was built on the intellect. Disney World was built from the soul. Your mind is drawn to intellectual and physical matters. While your soul is drawn to spiritual, non-physical, creative, playful, and expressive experiences. Your soul functions on a much higher dimension and frequency than your physical body and physical mind. So the core of who you are is made up of spirit or soul, and most deeply, it is made of love. Here's a simple exercise for you. I'd like you at this very moment to take your hand and point to yourself. Go ahead. Lift your hand and point to yourself. And without me seeing you right now, I can almost guarantee that your finger is pointing to your heart. Notice that your finger is pointing to your heart or the center of your chest. It's not pointing to your brain. Why? Because inherently, intuitively, we recognize that the core of who we are is contained within our heart, not within our intellect, not within our brain. So when you think of who am I, your hand immediately goes to your heart. Because your heart is built from love, passion, compassion, creativity, joy, and so much more. Now it's not to say that your intellect does not do these things. But they're a very different category. They're different dimension, different aspects, and different ways of functioning. And also by no means I'm trying to imply that the intellect is unimportant or less valuable than your heart or your soul. But nevertheless, there is a distinction in the sense that your soul is multidimensional and your intellect or mind is primarily three-dimensional in nature. It functions on a linear system, but your soul does not. So a simple comparison between the mind and the soul. The mind looks for answers. The soul already has the answers. The mind doubts while the soul knows the mind divides and the soul unites. The mind feels stuck while the soul is always moving and expressing. The mind says, I love you if, and the soul says, I love you, period. The mind always likes to assume. It very rarely gets the facts straight and it can very easily take you down the road of negativity and anger. But the soul does not and cannot do these things because your soul is made out of pure love. So you may be thinking, why should I connect to or even spend time realizing my soul self? And there are three major reasons. First, it helps with healing, physical and emotional. Secondly, it increases your ability to create. And third, you will release negativities. Let's go over each one. Number one, it helps with healing. Your soul is made of light, energy, information, and the core of all of that is unconditional love. So as you connect to your soul energy, your physical body will receive better instructions to manifest healings. Your soul energy will assist your physical and emotional energy for healing and well-being. It will help to readjust things, if you will, so that healing is possible. Number two, 
connecting to your soul will help increase your ability to create. In other words, you will magnetize your ability to attract and manifest the things that you desire. So for example, let's say you're looking for a job. The part that you will use first will be your intellect, your mind, and your intellect will put the resume together. Your intellect will send the resumes out to different people and so on and so forth. But that's as much as you can do. Your soul takes over from there. In other words, once you have your resume in place, once you distribute your resume, you have no idea who will call you or when they will call you. You have no idea. The mind cannot perceive that far into the future. Your soul, however, is the part that handles and manages the synchronicities. The synchronicities of you, yourself and others so that you will receive a phone call. And who will receive that phone call is dependent on the synchronicities that occurs for you at the soul level. So in other words, your mind will set out the intention to get a job, but your soul will set out the creation and manifestation of that job. Your mind cannot know or predict the future. It cannot know what will happen. It can only know what has already happened. It can only function from memory. The future is only an idea, a vision, or a possibility of what it would like to see or create. And that's the limitation of the mind. But the mind and soul can communicate with one another through imagination, dreams, and visualizations. And by having constant vision, dreams, ideas, and imagination about your goals, dreams, and healings, your soul energy will work or amplify itself to help you even better. But if you are trying to only manifest your healings and well-beings or success only through the intellect, you are only using half your power, if you will. And this is why it is essential. This is why it is beneficial to connect with your soul. It is the other dimension of who you are that is of tremendous importance and magic. So by connecting to your soul energy or soul information, you are able to accomplish things you want in a much easier way because your soul will help you to discover what your next step will be. Number three, you will release negativity. The majority of your problems are your mind. Your mind spins negative thoughts about something or another. The mind is always focused on the past or the future. And when we are focused on the past, we tend to be anger related. When we tend to focus on the future, we tend to be fearful or anxious because the mind somehow has a tendency to look at the negative side of things. But as you connect to your soul energy, the negativities of your mind will begin to fall away. So again, this is more the reason for connecting to your higher self. So now you may be thinking, this sounds good, I want to now connect to my soul, how do I do that? And there are three simple ways. The first way is to ask. Second, meditation. And third, do more soulful activities. Let's go over each one now. Ask. That's all. It may sound simplistic, but ask. When you close your eyes at night, when you lie down in meditation or prayer, just ask. Say, who or what am I? Ask the question, who or what am I? Don't worry right now what the answer is. The question is more important. The fact that you begin to ask the question, your soul will become energized to assist you and to give you the answer. So don't hurt your head right now if you don't get an answer. Also, you can say things like, I want to know my higher self or I want to know my soul. Keep this as a regular request within your own consciousness as you go through your day. I want to know my soul or I'm ready to know my soul. Another thing you can say is spirit or soul. Tell me what I need to know or what I need to do next. Again, use these messages, use these ideas. Talk to your soul. Your soul is aware of you completely. It is just that you are not aware of it or you're not having the intention to be aware of it. The second way to connect to your soul, meditation. Now it does not have to be a formal meditation, it can be, 
but meditation can take many forms. It can be a walking meditation. When you're walking, just pay attention to how you're walking. Notice your footsteps, notice the temperature. Notice the movement of your arms, the movement of your body. Notice what you're thinking. Just pay attention to your walking. If you're sitting down, pay attention to how you're sitting. Just notice your environment in a deeper way. This is a waking meditation or a walking meditation. So whenever you're doing anything, just pay attention to the act of doing. So even if you're just washing the dishes, while you're washing the dishes, pay attention to the water. Pay attention to the temperature of the water, the flow of the water. Feel the dishes in your hand. Feel the detergent as you're washing the dishes. While you're standing doing the dishes, feel the ground beneath your feet. Feel the movement of your body. This is a form of meditation. This is keeping your attention on the here and now. And this amplifies your spiritual energy. Number three, create more soulful activities for yourself. When you go about your day, notice or ask yourself, am I in my intellect right now or am I in my soul? So in other words, I'm going to say a few things and distinguish. Does it feel like the mind or the soul? You're calculating your money and paying your bills. Is this an activity of the mind or the soul? Chances are you'll say it's the mind and you're correct. You're doing your income tax, the mind or the soul? The mind. Your pet dog or cat is doing something funny and you're smiling. Is this an activity of your mind or your soul? If you say the soul, you're correct. You're having a meeting at work, the mind or the soul? The mind. You're walking down the street and you see a piece of glass on a sidewalk and you pick it up because you don't want someone to get hurt. Is that your mind or your soul? It's your soul. You're having a good laugh with some friends. Mind or soul? If you say the soul, you're correct. You're sitting on the bus and you give an old woman your seat. Again, that's a soulful activity. You're helping a child tie their shoes. Again, the soul. When you consider these activities, just a distinction between the intellect or the mind and your soul, or the distinction between your brain and your heart, this distinction alone will help you to awaken and realize more soulful activities. So when you go through your day, notice all the things you're doing, or notice the things you're observing, and ask yourself, which part of me is functioning right now, my intellect or my soul? because they are very different feelings you will get. So whenever you're doing anything, pay attention to how you feel and then ask, am I in my mind or my soul right now? So to summarize, your work now is to believe in and function from the higher part of who you are. And the reasons to do so are, one, it helps with healing, two, it increases your ability to create, and three, you will release negativities. And how do you connect to your soul? One, just ask. Two, meditation. And three, do more soulful activities. So to close, our mind is an essential tool which helps us to function in life and in no way should it be devalued. The mind helps us to form languages, create designs, work out mathematical formulas, and gets us through our day to day. The mind, however, naturally functions better when it partners with the soul. And when a connection to the soul begins, the soul will lovingly assist the mind to throw away its insecurities and old negativities so that more love, joy, and wisdom will enhance for you. Your soul is a very sacred part of who you are and it must be loved and honored at all times. Thank you.